Mr. Foreman, have you arrived at a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant guilty of all charges. He has no priors, Your Honor, but That's he's... misleading, Your Honor. He has no convictions. Are you but... telling me he's dangerous? Is no, but he's a saying? slippery little shit. Your Honor, request bail be continued bail? pending sentencing. Bail for this little yeah. sleazebag fence? He has no fence. priors. He's already wasted the jury's time, not to mention your time. He has, he has no priors, Your Honor. No priors. Judge, knock him in now. You know he's gonna go down. No, Your Honor, he's a very decent family man. He wouldn't... He has no priors. Forget he has about no the priors. What do you mean it's misleading? What, was he violent? No, or Your Honor, he wouldn't have heard of the plea. I mean, you're he was very lying, naive, but I'm asking that. Right. I'm not naive. All no, right, that's enough case. of this. All right, enough. All right, I'm going with you. I got your bail continued. Bail? I don't want my bail continued. What do you mean you got my bail continued? Don't you understand, Mr. Plant, that they found you guilty? Guilty? What do you mean? The jury found you guilty. I'm innocent, for Christ's sake. Mr. LaPlante, I've been persuaded in view of your continued employment and your lack of prior convictions to continue your bail under the same conditions heretofore, pending sentencing six days from now. In the meantime, you'll make an appointment with a probation officer who will make a recommendation to me regarding your sentence. I urge you to use those six days to get your personal affairs in order in anticipation of incarceration. In anticipation of incarceration. In anticipation of incarceration. He means prison, Mr. LaPlante. I know what he means. I'm not a prison kind of guy, Miss O'Day. Listen, you're not doing your job here. You're supposed to be getting me off. Last time, my lawyer got the charges dismissed. I think that's why the district attorney is being so hard-nosed this time. What about an appeal? You don't have grounds for an appeal. What we have to do is focus on the probation officer's report. He gives a good report and I walk? Well, I think a suspended sentence is unlikely. Now, you still have your job, right? Yeah. I've been calling in sick. They think I got the flu. And a son by your ex-wife? Joseph? A son? Yeah. What about him? Joey. Hey, Are you involved in his upbringing? Involved? Christ, she attached my paycheck, child support. Why do you think I got a court-appointed lawyer instead of a, you know, more experienced one? I understand. How often do you see your son? The kid? I don't know. On his birthday. When was that? May, I think. She don't like for me to see him. She thinks I'm a bad influence. Well, I think you should see your son and try to get your boss to write a note about your performance on the job. You need to create the impression of a responsible, decent citizen with familial responsibilities who happened to slip up once. Um, and I know that you're having financial difficulties, Mr. LaPlante, <laughs> but I was wondering if the money that I loaned you last week. <laughs> I... Some of it. I'll get you the uh, rest as soon as I can. If you're a little short, I mean, it's okay, yeah. I just don't want to take your last right. time. Well, so. I'd better keep some of it if I'm going to see the kid for gas and stuff. Wow, look at that one. If he were in there, he'd kill you. Wouldn't he, Dad? Yeah, yeah, something like that. You know this guy, this friend that your your mother's seeing? What is he, a fireman? Did he ever, uh, you know, like, just kind of spend the night? What's his name? Sometimes. His name is Elliot. Saved a guy's life one time in a fire. Oh, a hero. Well, was he ever in the Nam, this guy Elliot? The Nam? Yeah. What's that? It was this war, Vietnam. Doesn't matter. Were you in it? In the war? You didn't see that picture? What picture? Me in my uniform. Used to be over the fireplace. Hmm. Mm. See, what I don't like about public restrooms is you're always standing in piss. It don't matter to you, you got them sneakers on. But I'm standing in piss in very expensive shoes. I don't want piss on them. I want to protect them. It's a breakdown in custodial services. Look! Somebody lost the wallet. What?
Wait a minute, where are you going? Aren't you going to give it to the manager? You don't want to do that. You give it to the manager, he pockets the dough, throws the wall away. We'll go out back. Most people who work in supervisory positions, I'm not saying all, are crooks. What about the check? You didn't pay. The waiter knows me. I got an account here. Come on. What I'm going to do on this wall of thing is tomorrow when I get to the office, I'll have my secretary phone this guy up from the name on his driver's license. Let the guy come and get his wallet. Make sure you get a reward. You deserve a reward. You want Excuse one, don't me, you? sir. Can you spare some change? No way, fella. Not a chance. Got to resist the urge to be nice to those people. The con artists take advantage of the soft heart. A lot of them are financially better off than the rest of us. What you got to do is you got to look out for number one. It sounds harsh, but it's a goddamn excuse to vulgarity jungle out there. And that's why you got to keep a low profile, right? A low profile. Hey, Bernie, where you been, pal? Some guy's been looking for me, Chick. Spanish kind of guy. Spanish kind of guys? Business thing. Give me a 7 7, will you? What is it? Five days now I don't see you? Because I'm up to my ass and shit is why I'm broke, plus I got legal problems. Nobody was asking for me, huh? Nope. Legal problems? You gotta have a good attorney. Oh. My attorney, she just out of law school, a couple years old, and my kid, for Christ's sake. You got a kid, Bernie? How old's your kid? Nine, I think. Maybe ten. Yeah, ten. Nice kid. You got a ten-year-old attorney, Bernie? I can't afford no better. My ex, she attached my paycheck for child support payments. You looking for Bernie LaPlante by any chance? I didn't even know you had a kid. Think about kids. Since they're so young, they don't know nothing. Yet when you're a kid, you think you're going to grow up to be a wonderful person instead of an asshole like everybody else. We're all assholes, Bernie. When I was a kid, I thought I was going to be this fantastic, wonderful, heroic human being. Are you Bernie LaPlante? LaPlante. Bernie LaPlante. Mm -hmm. You the guys that Bunny called? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Coño, esto no sirve, mi amor. ¿Qué? No está en nada. Three hours is old, man. Very old. Hey, he might not have reported him at all yet. He might not know for a couple hours. What is he doing? Pick his pocket? Yeah. More or less. Trust me. He's a very, very fresh. Yeah? Hmm. Well, to be honest with you, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me either, Miss Gailey. Things seem to be on the upswing. Our difficulties with the SEC have been favorably resolved. In a business sense, I think we've turned the corner. Mr. Broadman, your wife and children are on their way here. Don't you think you should? Thank you for coming out here and letting me talk to you. Oh, my god, Chucky, duck out! Did you get it? Jesus, did I say that? Yeah, I got it. Sports training, learn to foul the ball. Hey, listen, how about you do your wrap up from up here? I'll pull back from that skyscraper there, find you here, then reveal the drop. Yeah! Suicide number 137 of this year in this city was neither a destitute nor a lonely man, but a successful executive with a loving family and $40 million in the bank. If there's nameless despair in executive offices, what can there be 60 stories below? where the hungry and the homeless, the brutalized and the addicted, fight their daily battle for survival. From a ledge 60 stories above the street, I'm Gail Gailey for Channel 4 News. What'd you think of the fall shot, Chief? The guy drops 20 stories, in perfect focus, center frame, while I smoothly go from F-16 to F-5-6. Hell of a shot, Chuck. He's beautiful. Parker! Run this down to Fraser. Tell him we'll open with it at 6-11 and 7 a.m. Bet she pushed him just for the great shot. Blind ambition. Pushed him. Oh, my God. Not really. 
Oh, he's just kidding, Mr. Wallace. Conklin's jealous because it wasn't his story. Actually, it tore up because we couldn't save the guy. She wanted to reach out. Reach out? Hi, Chief. Like the suicide? Never reach out. Hello, Mr. Wallace. He's right. It's unprofessional. No, if you reach out, you could get pulled over yourself. What are we talking about here? I told him how you're upset we didn't save the guy. Saving people is not our job. It's just as wrong to step in and save someone as it would be to push him off. You wouldn't push the guy, would you? I didn't say I thought we should have saved him. You didn't? No, I said I wish it had at least occurred to me to consider saving him. What good would that do? It would make me feel like a human being. Besides, it's not a bad story, is it? Newswoman saves suicide? It's unprofessional. Oh, you just can't bear the idea of good news. You're sitting on your ticket. Ticket? Of what's going on? She's flying to New York. She's been nominated for a Silver Mike Award. Silver Mike? You are covering us in glory. Well, I haven't won yet. I noticed you had me scheduled on a flight back an hour after the ceremony. An hour after? Deke, for heaven's sake, let's at least give her a night in New York City. I tell you what. We'll put her and her boyfriend up better. She broke up with her boyfriend. Listen, babe, we need you back. You gotta follow up on the jumper. Find the human interest in the grim, unending woe that pours from the wounded heart of the heartless metropolis. The dirt, you mean? That, too. Would this station put me up in a really good hotel? Absolutely. So long, babe. Okay, to hell with it. Party on, Gail. Is that what they say? I'll figure something out. She's pretending to be a person. She's really just a reporter. 50 bucks says she'll be back on the first flight. You know, I don't understand what you mean by a technicality, Mr. LaPlante. You were found guilty in a court of law by a jury of your peers. Yeah, but what I'm saying is the cops didn't follow the correct procedure with the evidence. You know the chain of evidence? Well, that's something that should have been established by your attorney during the trial. That's the point. I'm broke. I got this court-appointed lawyer. She's a kid. She don't know nothing. Mr. LaPlante, my job today is to make a recommendation for sentencing based on this interview. But what I'm trying to tell you is I'm not a criminal. Buying stolen goods, it's a little technical thing. Do I rob anybody? Do I hit anybody? You don't want to clutter up prisons with guys like me. Prisons are for deaf guys. Prisons are for guys who like to beat each other up, lift weights, fuck each other. I can't do that kind of time. A guy like me, I don't belong in that kind of environment. Give me a break. Look, I, I got this kid, nine, ten years old. I'm going to take him to the movies tonight after I get off of work. He worships me. If I go to the slammer, what's this going to do to the kid? I'm his goddamn role model, for, for Christ's sake. I don't have to explain to you how much my cameraman, editor, assignment editor, and news director, <clears throat> to name a few, did to get me this award. This is an onion. It's a metaphor for a news story. Only a few hours ago, I was standing on a ledge, 60 stories above the street, interviewing a man who subsequently jumped to his death. $40 million in the bank, happily married, good health. Great story. But there's got to be more. I mean, we're pros, right? Some kind of extramarital hanky-panky, maybe? Another great story. Maybe the guy's been accused of child molesting. Ah, oh, terrific story. What? Turns out the accusations were false? Well, wonderful. More story. Maybe the alleged mistress was lying, setting the guy up, huh? Sensational story. So we keep going. Oh, excuse me. Keep digging, keep investigating. We expose the guy's whole life, his family. Why? Because we're pros. Because we're looking for the truth. But what if it turns out, after all our digging, after all our painstaking investigation, what if it turns out there wasn't any truth? Just stories. One story after another, layer after layer, until there's nothing left. And if it's like that, do we have any obligation to stop at any point? Or do we just keep going, digging, digging, peeling, 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 till we've peeled it all away? Till we've destroyed what we were investigating in the first place? I'll bet all of you, like me, yearn for just one story. It isn't about unveiling layer after layer of human weakness. A story that reveals, with each new layer of investigation, something 
finer and nobler. Something even inspirational. Very nice, actually. Um, for excellence in the pursuit of truth. <laughs> Listen, I, I just wanted you to know that I got a seat back on the early flight after all, so. What? What do you mean you gave it to Conklin? Conklin wasn't on that ledge. Conklin wasn't the one the guy wanted to talk to. Gail, you were gonna do the town, remember? Fancy suite at the station's expense, see a show, maybe get laid. What was I supposed to do? Oh, cut the shit, Dee. You know damn well I'm not gonna hang around New York trying to get laid while you give away all my stories to Conklin. Okay, okay, you get back tonight, doll. I'll take Conklin off your suicide. Fly carefully. Congratulations on the award. <sighs> what did I tell you? They're all alike, the good ones. They're junkies for the story. Can't let go. First rule out here on the streets is you gotta watch out for number one. If you go down, you break a bone or something, you're gone. Nobody's gonna pick you up. Shitty color. Is there a nearby? Look at the skin tones. Yeah, kind of Christ's sake, homeless people are supposed to have shitty skin tones. I'm not moving. You know. You're a VIP, right? From the most beautiful place in the world. There you go. Skin tones. You got a fisher cut, bait. I wouldn't even do this if I didn't have these legal problems. $95, that's it. I gotta get out of here. I gotta take my kid to the movies tonight, Winston. I'm late, my kid's waiting. <laughs> How about a watch? Wanna buy a watch? Same kind I got, huh? Mm -hmm. Tell you what, give me $85 for the machine, the watch. I'll throw in a couple of wheel covers, a case of insect propellant. Here, you need a uh, air filter? I know why it's raining. I could have predicted it was raining because my goddamn wipers were all screwed up. If my wipers were okay, the goddamn sun would be shining at night.
What's the problem, pal? Just a minute. Please, Daddy! Wake up, Daddy! Oh, Somebody's coming! Hey, mister! Mister! Can you give us a hand? Hold them, buddy! We're talking hundred dollar shoes here. Here? Oh, sure. Yeah, I think. Let me help you there. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. 
Give me a hand here, lady. I'm not a goddamn bodybuilder. Get away from the plane quickly! It may explode! <laughs> 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 images of raging flames with no regard for his own personal safety. Go, Chucky. Go, baby. Sorry, Fletcher. Ooh. What a way to go, man. I'm okay! Lady, you're not okay! I'm a reporter! I'm you got right. a broken arm! It's my leg! My leg hurts! Chucky! Holy shit, it's Gailey! Gailey! Hold up, hold up! You I were have... on the plane? It's my story, Con. I did the research. Hey, she's in. Get the flight attendant. The one who manned the door? Also, some guy, a passenger. Pull me out. Talk to him. Then get down to the hospital. Oh, she's a real piece of work. Unbelievable. It's my story. I did the research. You wouldn't believe the shot I got back there. Major award. I, I start in this fireman's face. Fantastic. You know, sad but excited. Where's my car? My car was right here. Where's my... Where are you hurt, sir? What? Where are you hurt? Hey. Why don't we go over to the ambulance? Let the medical people check you out. I'm not... I don't need an ambulance. I'm looking for my car. Sir! Must have burnt up. You weren't in your car, sir. You've been in an airplane crash. Please, let the god in his medical attention us. Okay, Ray, just give me one eye outside.
waited for you for three hours. You're not going to believe it. I'm so I tired of your bullshit, I'm Bernie. Ever. It's not my fault. It's never I'm your fault. To tell never, you this ever. Story. You screwed up my life. Now you're going to screw up your son's life, and you're never going to accept responsibility for anything ever. Is he here? Who? Your friend, the fireman. He had an emergency call. A real emergency. Why don't you let me in instead of waking up everybody in the whole neighborhood? All right, if you let me talk for Christ's sake, I'll tell you what happened. What happened, happened what? is the same thing that always happens. You blew it. Only this time, you broke your son's heart instead of mine. He was so proud, looking forward to going to the movies with his father, and you let him down like you let everyone down always. What did you do, take a mud bath? That's what I'm trying to do. Shut up, Bernie! Oh. Okay, forget it. Just let me talk to Joey to apologize. He's in bed, and you're not going to wake him up and make him crazy. Do you understand? Mm. He comes home from the zoo, and he wants to know if Elliot's a war hero like you. He wants to know how many people you killed. Elliot, 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 the fireman. I had to explain your tendency to exaggerate, how you killed as many people as the other supply clerks in your outfit. No more, no less. I didn't say I killed anybody. Whatever! You let him believe it! Then I had to explain about the homeless. The homeless? The homeless, how not all of them own apartment complexes, how not all of them play the stock market, how not all of them rent babies when they're panhandling. He's a young boy, Bernie. Impressionable. Listen, F, it's important. I gotta see him. I well, gotta, use the phone, Bernie. Very He'd love to hear from you. Reasons. What happened to your shoe? I've been trying. No, I don't want to know. Some fantastic adventure, right? Something really crazy. All I was doing was giving him advice, preparing him for life. You don't want him to grow up soft, do you, Ev? It's tough out there. It's a goddamn jungle. Well, back to the jungle, Bernie. Sorry I have to bother you again. This is for Joey. A reward for this wallet he found. When I returned it, I told the guy that he had to give my kid something uh, for finding it. You know, for the honesty, so the kid would learn how honesty pays. Do you want to give it to him ever, sh should I? actually went into it. You went into a, a burning airplane. Into it? Into it? For Christ's sake, I was back to you living in the goddamn thing. Every time I turn around, some other person wants me to save him. I couldn't see a foot, a foot in front of me smoking, and all of a sudden, boom! It explodes. You know I could be dead. But you pull people out. You're a hero. No, I fucked it up. I was trying to impress this kid. Don't ask me why. I was going to rescue his old man, but I couldn't find a poor bastard. He must have blew up. Oh. I got the hell out of there. Well, a lot of people would have even tried. It was a brave thing even to try. Yeah, try stupid. Mm. Just toss them in the back, please. A lot of people would say that's what heroism is. 
stupidity. Doing something that if you thought about it, you wouldn't do it. It's not in your interest. One more. I guess you kind of got a drinking problem, huh? I sell them down at the recycling center. It gives me a little bit of gas and food. Looks like you're living here, for Christ's sake. You know, I do in bad weather, but mostly I like camping in the woods. I thought you were down on your luck, too, when I picked you up. Down on my luck? Yeah. Hey, I told you. A goddamn plane fell on me from out of the sky in America, for Christ's sake. See these shoes? $100 pair of shoes, one shoe. You should give it to somebody with one leg. One leg? Why don't you let me off at the next exit and I could take a bus? I know a gentleman who sells stuff at the recycling center. He only has one leg. I think it's the right foot. Yeah, sell it to him. You get a couple of bucks and pays for the gas. Um, he doesn't have any money. It's very kind of you. Down on my luck. Got some mud on me is all. I got a nice apartment, stereo. If I had a stereo, we could listen to you on the news. The news? What, are you worried about the stock market? No, the plane crash. Uh, didn't they interview you? I don't, I don't give no interviews. That's a, that's a, that's a lot of shit. Keep a low profile. That's my motto. It happens I got some legal problems. My attorneys don't like me talking to the media. Now, if you could step on it, I'm supposed to be in my office five minutes ago. My uh, secretary uh, has got appointments booked for me, you know, all day. I'm very late. One word. One word, LaPlante, you find. You got that? One word. Bill. Don't say Bill, Bernie. Don't say one word. Didn't I say one word and you're fired? Right. You know why? Because it'll be an excuse. It'll be Bernie LaPlante excuse number 4,106. No, 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 4,112. That's how many excuses you've given me. I keep track of them electronically. I've heard all of them, Bernie. Bill, I got serious That's legal it. problems. You talked. You're fired. Out of here. Out of here. Jesus Christ. I got people waiting. I got orders coming in. And you, you're going to go out like that, meet the public in stinking stock and feet? I also have financial problems. I don't care about your problems. I care about my problems. I mean, and you are one of my problems. I was driving. Get out. out. I was out. driving my car. Bernie, Bernie, I don't want to hear any more about this, OK? Out. The plane fell on my head. Yeah, I'll be on your head in a second. Out. I don't understand. You can't find him? Well, there's a lot of confusion around what took place last night, Gail. It's not clear. But you said all the passengers were accounted for. Apparently, the guy who pulled you out wasn't a passenger. A fireman? A, a paramedic? He didn't have a uniform. From what we could get, there's a kind of... sort of a mystery guy involved. We're piecing together different accounts. A mystery guy? Not a passenger. Who? We don't know who he is. He... he disappeared. A non-passenger, non-rescue worker went into a burning plane and pulled me out and disappeared. Apparently, this guy's the one who opened the emergency exit from the outside. Everybody saved everyone on the plane. Because of him, there were no fatalities. Gail, I don't think you're supposed to be moving around like that. You're attached Chucky, over here. Chucky, where's your camera? Get this thing. Bring that. Easy. All of a sudden, this civilian rushes into the plane. What did he look like? Oh, he was, it was just his face all dirty. It just appeared. He was asking for Mr. Fletcher. My son and I got separated in the confusion and smoke. The very courageous stewardess at the exit told me my boy had gotten out, so I got out too. But my son had already told this man that I was still in there. I thought my dad was still, still in there. So I asked the man to save my father. What did the man say, Richie? He said, oh, he said, I'll save him. He said, I'll save your father. Thanks.
That's him. Who else? We've accounted for everybody else. That's our hero. I didn't even notice the guy. I was into the foreground drama, heroic firemen looming in the frame. Any chance we could do some kind of electronic enhancement? Get a clear picture, identify him? Far out. Never saw him. It's the camera. It has a life of its own. At times, I feel as if we were one, together, capturing little moments of history in a kaleidoscope of colors and drama. <laughs> There's no face. There's nothing really to work with. Big dots. That's all you're going to get. Look at that guy. He just saved 54 people. And now he's going to disappear. Who is he? I'll save him. He said, I'll save your father. All of a sudden, this civilian, he rushed into the plane. Leslie, the other flight attendant, told me the guy dragged me to the exit. Here, give this guy a hand, he said. And the next thing I knew, he was going back in there. And all that smoke. Out of the darkness, out of the smoke and the fear, came a man with no name, no uniform, but an abundance of courage. A man who was thinking not about himself, but about others, risking his own life for ours. He's out there now somewhere. And whoever you are, I and the other survivors of Flight 104 say thank you. God bless you. It's not bad, but if you gotta wear a cast, you ought to feature it more. It's part of the story. Network's taking everything we give them. They want to feed off our 6 o'clock, whether we find the mystery guy or not. We're very big nationally. It's a wonderful piece. Emotional. I love it. We're going to feature Gail's cast more. Well, my cast is only interesting until the hero shows up. Then whoever has him has the story. Good reason for you to find him, babe. How come you're here? You should be out digging. We could help her out, Deke. How about offering a reward in exchange for an exclusive interview? Money and news, Wally. Dangerous waters. Yeah. He's right, Mr. Wallace. Speaking. Especially since we don't even Shoot. know what the guy looks like. Well, of course you know what he looks like. He saved you. What? Right? They found what? A phone check with survivors has confirmed that the shoe does not belong to any of the passengers or crew of Flight 104. However, several witnesses recall the mysterious man who saved 54 people, referring to his missing shoe. The conclusion is the unknown hero, known to many as the angel of Flight 104. Where's a size 10B? Joey Dinner, now, turn that everybody. thing off. Mom, Mom! He lost his shoe. He lost his shoe. He lost his shoe. Who lost his shoe? It's the unknown hero. Wash your hands. They found his shoe right beside the plane crash. Superman, you mean? Lost his shoe? <laughs> what next? Elliot, the man saved hundreds of people. 54. I was there, remember? You know why none of us rushed in that plane, huh? Because we're trained firemen, that's why. Part of a team, a disciplined team. We take chances all the time, save people's lives, but we don't do crazy things. This guy does something really dumb, and he lucks out. So the media go crazy over his shoe, for God's sakes. I mean, what kind of message are they giving to the youth, huh? 
What kind of message are you giving to the youth? Sneering at someone for sticking his neck out. You sound like my ex, for heaven's sake. Mr. Cynicism. So what can I say? Give your ex credit for being smart enough not to do something stupid. Maybe the guy's not all bad. I'm going to watch TV and hope it's not all this Superman stuff. Mom, my father only had one shoe on him when he came here. You were in bed, weren't you? I, I saw him out the window. Huh? You think your father would do something like that? Rescue people? Your father is Bernie the plant. It's against his religion to stick his neck out. Sit down. The warden of a Montana prison insists that the unknown hero is a dangerous child molester who escaped from the institution in April. As far away as Scotland, the leader of a religious sect claims the mysterious hero is, in fact, an angel anticipated in scripture. Hey, Bernie. The president, while he declined to How's it going? You don't want to know, chick. You don't want to know. Asking to be informed Those guys been in yet? You in business with them guys or what? Well, because you know I wouldn't want a problem for the establishment. No, you couldn't have a problem, Chick, because I personally have got them all. I cornered the whole market. You wouldn't believe what I've been through. You know, I was taking my car to get my kit. Oh. How are you doing? Brought some friends, okay? Oh yeah, sure. Excuse me, Chick. In addition. We bring you a special announcement from Channel 4 station manager, James Wallace. Good evening. We at Channel 4, like you, have been stirred by the courage and the humanity of this... Tell me, amigo, what do you got there for us? Some more plastic? Yeah, plastic. Our Premium right. stuff here, high limits. Not reported. How do you know it's not reported? Because I know, trust me on this. Hey, hombre, he don't even trust his mother. Why are you gonna trust you? Because I'm not his mother. <laughs> Understanding that he might have hey, hombre, por aquí. Then again, like you, we want to see what is best in us. We want to examine it. And for that reason, we at Channel 4 have decided to offer this unknown hero a reward of $1 million. How and many of these you got? Eight, ten? They're going to give that guy a million dollar reward. Who? That plane crash guy. A million bucks? That's right. Is this all of them? Eight? What? What plane crash guy? The one shoe dude, man. The guy that saved all those people. Channel 4 is going to give this guy a million dollars just for an interview. <sighs> so, a million bucks. <laughs> hey. Hey, hombre. We're trying to do some business here. You got more of these? A million dollars. Hey. I'm the guy. I got an appointment. I got you. Hey, hey, oh! Hey, oh! The plant, you're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Don't you know who I am? Don't you know where I got the plastic? I got a million bucks from the jail. Oh, I have money. Hey, crap against bullshit. One million dollars to the anonymous hero. One million bucks to Angel who saves 50 people and takes off. Now, please. If your foot is in a size 10B, don't remain in line. We're only looking for size 10B, hero. Why not? Why not? Kick your ass! Hey, it ain't just me saying you ain't the hero. Everybody in the goddamn line knows you're not the hero. That's a racist perspective. Assuming that because something heroic was done that a white man done it, a man with mud on his face could be a man of any color. Most likely was, which is true in this case, because it was me with mud all over me. Can you believe this? I mean, there must be a thousand phonies here after my reward. Scaly, it's me. Look, come on, come on, it's me. I'm the guy who saved your life. Come on, it's me. You remember? My foot's only an eight and a half, but I wear a 10B for the comfort. I swear. Hey, Miss Scaly, I Scaly, there's a cop looking for you from robbery detail, Inspector Dayton. He wants you to call him. What about? Oh, I didn't ask him. Call back and find out, okay? I'm really busy. Excuse me. This matter will remain at $5,000.
Next. The angel of Flight 104. You're telling me you're the angel? The angel. Of I didn't say angel. That's a little strong. Listen, here's the thing. I gotta get over the TV station yeah, and get my million bucks. Mr. Laplante, I really want to help you with this crazy story. It's me. I'm Mr. Laplante, right the, here. The DA is asking that your bail be set at $25,000 $25, because you arrested again while waiting sentencing. 25 grand is peanuts. All you gotta do is get me out Mr. long Plant. enough to collect. Your Honor, my Plant. attorney here says the prosecutor there wants 25 grand for bail. Mr. Laplante, you'll be silent until the court recognizes Which you. Which is fine by me. I got no problem with that at all. In fact, Your Honor, I'd be proud to double it. 50 grand for the people. You know, like a tip. Mr. Laplante. What do you say? If you don't stop chattering immediately, I will ask the bailiff. I said I want order! Sorry, Your Honor. Yeah, we got carried away. They found him. Found who? The angel of flight 104. <laughs> on the news, sir, just now. He's going to be on Channel 4 at noon. We'll sustain a bail of $25,000. That ought to keep you out of trouble for a minute or two. Your Honor, my client is Miss, your client is a pain in the ass. Says... 12 noon, huh? Channel 4. Huh. I was out in the woods, and I heard a huge crash. And I saw flames, and I went over there to, to take a look. And everything there was uh, like a blur. Mm. There was a lot of smoke. And screaming. Uh, I was actually relieved that it was just a plane crash and I could help. But I don't have a detailed memory of it. It was too scary. Tell us why you disappeared, John. Well, I... Uh, At first, I didn't know I was the hero. I thought mm. uh, the boy's father hadn't survived that, and I had uh, f failed him, and I couldn't, I couldn't face the boy. And then, after that, uh, well, I, I've been, uh, I've been down on my luck lately, and I just didn't really uh, feel too presentable. But finally. You did come forward. Why? The money. I wouldn't have come forward if it wasn't for... If it wasn't for the money. Go back. You're not moving. Cut. Right there. Right on that look. You didn't tell me he was so cute. He saved my life. The survivors were shocked to learn that the hero who appeared out of the smoke and fire and pulled them to safety was indigent and tragically hadn't slept in a bed in more than three years. John Bubber was living in his car at the time of the nearly tragic crash, eking out a meager existence by collecting bottles and cans in the woods and along oh, the roadside. Oh, he's a fake. You know him? Oh, he's a goddamn fake. He's a bum. He's a goddamn homeless bum. You know, I thought they'd all go, it's him, it's him, and want to hug the guy or something. I... Relax, Wally. He had the shoe and the shoe checked out. This means I could stop worrying? Uh, uh, where are we putting him up? Drake Hotel, penthouse suite, and never stop worrying. I figure we'll do a sidebar on what it's like to go from sleeping in your car and collecting cans to sleeping in the poshest suite in town. Also, Gail's on to something. Checking into his background, I guess. What's it gonna be, Gailey? 
Dirt or more poetry? Well, we all know which one you'd prefer. Excuse me, Miss Gailey. That guy, Inspector Dayton, he's recovered a bunch of your credit cards. Who? Inspector Dayton, that cop from robbery detail who was looking for you, they caught the guy who stole your credit cards trying Nobody to sell Nobody stole my credit cards. They were burned up in the crash. Which reminds me, we got my money. What about the reservations? Uh, two at eight at the Barcelona. $400 for dinner. She's taking Mr. Bubber to dinner at the Barcelona. Bubber to dinner? That's a great idea. Chucky, come in here, Chucky. Wait, Chief. This is private and personal. He's a news story for Pete's sake. He saved my life. looking at us. Not us, John. And they're used to celebrities here. Listen, Miss Gailey, I really... Gail. Gail. I didn't mean to, uh... It's not what I wanted, that reward. I didn't really think... Thank you. All I wanted was a square meal, maybe, maybe a bath. A night between clean sheets. I wasn't after a million dollars. Twenty would have been fine, maybe fifty, but... What's a guy like me gonna do with a million dollars? Take a look at these prices and say that. Hey, you mess with me, I'll cut hey, you out. I need it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, you're such a brute. I'll call your Come on, come on. 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 Come I'm not entitled to a million dollars, Gail. I didn't, I didn't expect. I didn't... All the adulation? Yes. Makes you feel like a fake, doesn't Actually, it? Actually, yes. I should have never come forward and presented You're a myself. credit to the oh. goddamn human race. Well, I wouldn't put it necessarily. It could have been me on that plane. Or my family. Look, you're a celebrity now, John. People are going to want to please you. Or use you. Or both. <laughs> Sign this. What's your name? Sylvia. Sylvia. Sylvia, if I sign this for you, will you do me a favor? All right, what I'd like is, and maybe 
Some of the rest of you couldn't help Sylvia here. I'd like you to scrounge up some blankets. Old ones, maybe 50. Take them down to the corner of 5th and Grand. Pass them out. 5th and Grand? Yes. He means the homeless people. The bombs. It's cold out there. You'll feel warmer for every person you give a blanket to. I bet they'll do it. I bet they'll get some blankets. What you did was so uplifting. You're a saint, John Bubber. You think so? Mm -hmm. Well, what, maybe you should up uh, support the uh, up the support for the needy from the people. You could support the entire Chicago Bulls. Good night. Good night. I think I'd better see you to your room. Okay. <laughs> kind of a bodyguard. Support a, a small airfield. <laughs> yeah, <Gail>, I... <laughs> It's been some time since I received that kind of attention. It's been several years. Years? Yes. Huh. There'll be plenty of opportunities. Jerry, you're a very nice person. I don't want to hurt you. I know. You think I saved your life. I can't take advantage. You did save my life. And it's me. I, I'd be taking advantage. I'm a... I'm a reporter. I'm... I'm... I'm supposed to be a professional. I can't do this. It's not right. I don't have to write, huh? No story, right? Good night. I know the truth about you, John. I'm flying in some guys from your unit in Vietnam tomorrow. Vietnam? Good night. Smoke. Mortifier. People screaming. We would have all died that day in that little rice paddy. Right there in Vietnam, if it hadn't been for Johnny Bubba. Why? What did he do? He pulled us out. He pulled us out one by one. I wouldn't be given no TV interview. I'd be lying in my grave. Another guy with his name on the wall in Washington, D.C., if it hadn't been for Johnny. Why didn't he get a medal? <sighs> Wasn't no officers around to witness it and write him up. It didn't surprise me one bit. He was the one that saved all those people in the plane. He was always thinking about the other guy before himself. After an emotional reunion, Bubber's fellow veterans watched as station manager James Wallace presented Bubber with a check for one million dollars. As Bubber reacted to his sudden wealth, word came that the Secretary of the Navy, responding to an urgent resolution of the Senate, has conferred upon John Bubber the Medal of Honor. You see, when, when you're out on the streets like I was, living in your car or sleeping under bridges, the worst thing, even worse than the cold or the hunger, is, is the feeling that you're just plain useless, that you, you don't matter to a single soul in the entire world. Nobody, nobody really needs you and nobody really wants you. So I guess I... I did what I did because I, I think I was really trying to save my, my life more than anything else. I was... I was trying to connect myself with people again, try to be part of the whole. And you have to help others in order to do that. You need a role to play, even if it's a humble role that gives you self-worth. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I mean, I'm one of those crazy guys who says that money's not important. It's very important, especially when you're out in the streets, down and out on your luck. Like I was, a buck can be the difference between life and death. But. At the same time, money isn't everything. Even millionaires commit suicide. Is he like that in real life? So gorgeous. Oh, many, it's pretty remarkable. Many instances of uh, unhappy rituals. You didn't get it on with them. Don't be ridiculous. I think a person. A reporter. 
<laughs> oh, what? Reporters don't have hormones? Not to eat. Reporters have to rise above their hormones. But after that, he needs to be a person. The guy is a natural. He needs to be part of society, and you can be part of society by helping other people. You need to help those who, who need help. You help me, you make me a hero. Makes you a hero. If we help each other, we can all be heroes together. We're all heroes, huh? Asshole. The plant, Bernard! The plant! Hey? You made bail, Ace. You lucky! Hey? Come on, let's take a hike. You lucky they're taking your brandy ass out of here, boy. What do you mean? If they didn't reduce the bail, how'd you get me out? I took a loan on my car. You paid? And my computer. You paid a positive 10%? I was inspired by the hero, how he stuck his neck out for others, how he took a chance, and... That fake inspired you alone, me? A guy who's been fired off his job, 2,500 bucks? A guy who's probably gonna do time? You're supposed to be an attorney. You're supposed to use good judgment. Well, as you'd like to point out, Mr. LaPlante, I am relatively inexperienced. My naivety may have worked to your benefit in this instance. Well, you're right. I'm glad you got me out. I appreciate it. Oh! Mr. O'Day. Mr. O'Day, come here. Now that you loan me $2,500 plus, can I have $20 for cab fare? Please. What do you say, Miss O'Day? I read the probation report and it's not good. I think you're going, Miss Bernie, I think you're going to prison. Well, and at least I don't I'm going to get my million bucks. I've seen on TV where that do gooder is going to go to a children's hospital, you know, visit sick kids at 3.30. He's a menace. He's got to be stopped. He's making people wacko. Who, John Bubber? Look what he's done to you. He's making them wacko. And I mean wacko. Wacko, wacko, wacko. Hi, what's your name? Cody. Hi, Cody. I'll be right back. Hey, Bubba. Hi. Can I get your autograph? Yes, yeah. all those people. Yes, all, all those, those people. people. Mr. Bubba, this way, please. Hi, hi. 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 You got a press conference? I forgot it. I, what, I just... Get your hands off. I have to leave. What do you need? Talk to the guy. Hi, Bubba. I'm here first. I'm here. Hi, Bubba. Listen, kid. You got to hang on. I know you're scared. We all get scared. That's when you have to fight. Ellen's in a coma. He can't hear you. He can hear me. Listen, Alan. Check. Check. Okay. Listen, Alan. I know you're in the darkness in there. I know it's scary. Now the doctors are trying their best, but they can't do it. You have to do it. You gotta come out of the darkness. I want you to struggle for me, Alan. You're a hero. You can't quit. Heroes never quit. Come on, this is a hospital. Let's cooperate. Let's keep this area clear unless you have hospital business. Come on, fella, have the bus and cooperate. Hey, let's see some of that. Hey, buddy, you're with the media, right? I got a story here for you. Bubba, he's a fake. Hold that. I'm talking to you. Hey, come back. Hey, what's the matter with you? You want crazy?
Thanks for helping. you feel better to insult the very brave man who's worth about a thousand of you, go ahead. Like he says, we're all heroes, pal. Even you. Bullshit. That's a lot of bullshit. Okay, have it your own way. You're not a hero. along with 20 of the real survivors of Flight 104. See the real-life participants reenact the terrifying drama inside the burning plane. Out of the darkness, out of the fire, out of a nightmare of fear, came the angel of Flight 104. John Bubber saved 54 people. This is his story and theirs. A drama featuring the actual people who actually lived those moments of terror. No makeup, no music, no actors. This is the real thing. Thursday night, Channel 4. Be there. All right. Upset? Well, What's he upset about? Oh, said he's not an actor. Well, he's not supposed to be an actor. That's the whole point. He's a real-life hero. All he has to do is act like a real-life hero. That's the beauty of the concept. That's the whole freshness of it. Did, did she call him back? She's talking to him now. What? Why? Well, I mean, we paid him a million dollars. You think he want to cooperate a little, help us with our ratings? Okay. How'd it go? Well, he'll do it. You really should have talked to him first, you know. Back in the news again, John Bubber. The man who saved 54 people from a burning plane has apparently awakened a young... Hey, I don't blame you for being home. sore. I know I screwed up for getting busted in here. A miracle doctor is calling You got a right to kick me out. Young Alan Baird had been unconscious since an automobile accident five days ago. John Bubber insisted on talking to young Alan, even though doctors discouraged him, saying the boy couldn't hear Bubber's words of encouragement. Two hours later... I'm not going to kick you out, Bernie. Alan Baird suddenly and unexpectedly regained consciousness. The doctors, who had believed the boy had little or no chance of survival, now predict a slow but complete recovery. Bubber waved away cameras as he spoke intimately in the... Thanks, Chick. I appreciate it. So nobody Hell of a guy. What he said, Vietnam. Plane crash, no now miracles. Alan himself has yet to comment. A nurse who was with him says his first words were, could you ask my mom to make me some pancakes? Just a rehearsal. Action. John. What? Come here. Come here. And then you lean down and free me from the seat. Remember, I was caught. And you, like that, yeah, right. Can you help me out? Yeah. Boy, you seem taller. Must be psychological now that I know you saved my life. Oh, okay, I, I can't. This is wrong. I can't do this. I can't go through with this. You didn't lift me, though. Wait, put me down. Put me down. Come on. That's more, um, like you supported me. You're like this. Like that. Yeah. It was kind of sexy. You can support me anytime, John. Oh, okay. This is no good. <laughs> you know? 
know it. I just remembered. You were like swearing and talking about bodybuilding. Bodybuilding. Guys, guys, <laughs> this has to play serious. This was a very serious thing. John, could you kind of lift her more and sort of carry her like this? That's right. I think I think it'll play better. I think it'll play better. And Gail, if your artistic and journalistic integrity can handle it, it'll look fabulous on the screen. Okay, take this all the way through to the end, please. Then we'll put John in his mud makeup and we'll do a take all the way from the top. Boom, 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 right away, please. This is not right. Oh, it's okay. It just looks better this way. I didn't have my purse then, though. You're an inspiration, John. You're making us better human beings. Less cynical. More open, more giving. Do you realize that? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Can you leave her here and you go back inside for Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith. Right. Mr. Smith? What would you say if I told you I ran into a burning plane and saved a bunch of people and risked my life? You mean like Bubber, the hero? Oh, yeah. Like that, same thing. Well, I mean, uh, what do you want me to say here, Bernie? Is it like a riddle or something? I mean, if I said it, would you believe me? You wouldn't, would you? Oh, I mean, it's a character thing, Bernie. You wouldn't do it. No offense, me neither. A guy like Bubber, though, he's a certain kind of guy. You know, he's heroic. You and me, we're not heroic. It's not our nature. Don't mean we're bad or nothing. We're just not so inclined. What about it? Don't be depressed, Bernie. You don't have to be a hero to be a human being. The thing is, chicken I'm going down. Down? You mean jail for that credit card stuff? Jesus, Bernie. Not jail, prison. Not that credit card bullshit. That's nothing. I got a conviction. Sentencing tomorrow. Some cases of pain I got involved with. Latex. I see this uh, probation officer. He writes a letter to the judge. Says I'm antisocial. Antisocial? Jesus, Bernie. How much pain are we talking about? A lot. I think we've all done something very important here today. Congratulations. Thank you. Excellent job. Good work. Take that out. Bye-bye, Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Keep studying. You're going to be a big actor. <laughs> there you go. Thank Bye. You. John. John. Powerful stuff. Very powerful. Don't they? Thank you so much. Let's keep in touch, OK? Let's keep in touch. Yeah, I'm sorry. What to tell all about it? Can go somewhere and talk. Oh, my goodness. Just let me get that gunk off your face, Mr. Bubber. Mr. Bubber. John, would you sign Kelly's Bubber doll? Bubber doll. Well, it won't take more than 10 minutes of your time, 15 at the most. I'll buy you a cup of coffee down the street. Gail. Gail. So, how does this, what's his name, the sleazebag, say he got my cards? Bernard LaPlante? <laughs> this bozo got more stories than a newspaper. And one of them, he says he's the angel of Flight 104. Pulls you off the plane, saves your purse, and forgets to return it. And that's version 63. Version 64, he says he kept it to pay for his $100 shoes. <laughs> the guy's a two-bit bullshit artist, already got a sentence pending for dealing stolen goods. Listen. This guy, the hero, Bubba. Mm -hmm. He was a homeless guy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was down on his luck. He couldn't have swiped your purse, could he, while he was rescuing you and sold it to this guy, LaPlante. John Bubba risks his life to save me and 54 other people and swipes my purse. <laughs> <laughs> Too far fetched. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, um, I'm not trying to make problems for John Bubba. I just want to make sure this the plant guy does some meaningful time. Tell me more about it. Homework. You're doing your homework, remember? Homework, homework, homework. No homework, no zoo trips, no movies. Hello? He's doing his homework. 
It's your father. If you don't talk to him, he'll call all night. Hey, Joey, how you doing, pal? It's me, the old man. Did you get the $20? What? Oh, well, she's right on that, Joey. That's the best place for it. Yeah, college fun. I was gonna tell you that myself. Look, about, uh, about how I didn't show up the other night. I just, what? You see me out the window. One shoe, you're in the mud. So you thought I might have been the heroic guy? Yeah? And what'd she say when you... against my religion, huh? Well, you know, Joey, this kind of stuff, we gotta talk about it sometime, man to man. But listen now, I gotta go away now on this business trip, so I won't be seeing you for a while. And what you gotta do, you gotta listen to your mother because she's smart, she's very smart. You know, she knows what's best for you. No. 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 Joey, it ain't because I don't like you. Christ. I mean, not Christ, you know, I don't, I don't want to go away on this business trip. I love you, but I gotta, that's part of growing older. It's all these, all these goddamn fun expression business things you have to do. Which reminds me, you know, this hero business, one of the things you'll learn is your griddle. As, as, as you grow older, is that life gets very complicated. Weird, actually. It's, you know, like people aren't exactly like they seem. Nothing is. Life gets un, 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 unbelievable. This is normal as you grow older. I, I, I would have seen you that night. I was talking to Joey. Your son actually wants to spend time with you. If you let him down this time after popping back into his life. You gotta understand, it's just, it's just goddamn business driven. But please don't hang up. Wait a second, Ev, please. Wait a minute, Wait, just let me say one thing. Look, I know I kinda act like an asshole sometimes, I know that. I know you were a good wife. I know I fucked it up. I had a good thing I blew it. I just, I just, I just want you to know that I know that. Okay, I gotta go now. Business trip, yeah. Be a while. Okay? Sorry, took so much time. Fortune. Jeez, I hope the silly bastard didn't kill himself. He's been very upset about this sentence that he got. He's going to prison. Hey, is that a camera you're carrying there? If he, if he killed himself, you could take pictures. No dead body. I suppose it's not too often that you guys get an opportunity to take pictures of the body before the cops get here. Exclusive. Mr. Winston, I wonder if you'd mind if we waited here? <laughs> What's he gonna do, sue? <laughs> I mean, he, he's lucky that, that, that a person like yourself, that a, a celebrity like yourself would wanna even take an interest in him. What do you do, some kind of drug thing? We're not really free to say. Uh, of course, of course, I understand. It's confidential. Okay. 
personal. Okay. Well, I'll watch it on television. All right. Okay. What are we doing here? This guy could be ours. Maybe. I have a feeling he's important somehow. Listen, I know you're this career fiend, but I've got a wife and family. Well, you're lucky, Chucky. Ow! What's the matter? The sofa. What is it? The Silver Mike Award. How did a guy like LaPlante get an award? For excellence in the pursuit of truth. LaPlante? Are you Bernard LaPlante, sir? What the? What's your relationship with John Bubber? Turn that. You? How did you acquire this, Mr. LaPlante? How do you think I got it? Put that thing down for a second. This John is my apartment. Huh? What are you trying to get John Bubber to do? What's my say? He's gonna jump! Bubber's gonna jump! It's on channel 13. What? 13! Officials of the fire department say they cannot rig a net below him because they're afraid it will trigger his decision to jump. Oh, my gosh. Barber has said repeatedly he will only talk with Gail Gailey. The phone! The phone, the phone is over here, Mr. He's green, for Christ's sake. No shit. You took advantage of me, LaPlante. It's a you piece of shit! It, you bozo, you gotta, you gotta adjust don't it. Don't touch that scumbag! Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Do not For God's sake, tell him I'm on my way. Let's go check. A police escort's gonna pick us up en route. You tool the plant, you're coming with me. Me. If you're not in that van, in 10 seconds, I'll have the cops pick you up. Bob, what kind of bullshit is this? Right. Is this America? Let's see if money can or is this some. Here. 20, 30, 5. Chucky, what have you got? Give Mr. the plant your money. Come on, let's go. You media go. people, you think you can just buy people cheap? Hey, that's all I have. That's all, big time cameraman like you. That's all you've got. My fault, my fault. This nutcase goes out on a ledge, and it's my fault. If anything happens to John Bubber, Mr. LaPlante, I will see you prosecuted to the full extent of the law. What, is everybody in love with this bozo? Yes. I don't get it. Yes, everybody is in love with him, the whole country. And they're not going to be very happy if he leaps to his death because he was blackmailed by some black lousy man. little... I blackmailed this wacko wonderboy. you think I have figured boy? it out? Just because the cops aren't onto you yet doesn't mean you're home free. I'm a veteran reporter. <laughs> I've seen your kind before, the underbelly of crime. Underbelly? And all that smoke and flame, John had a moment of weakness. He was down on his luck, destitute. It was an impulse, stealing my purse. Stole your purse while saving you? You gotta be kidding me. And sold it to Mr. LaPlante, the fence, who's now trying to blackmail poor John. This guy's gotta be nuts. He saves all those people, then he swipes your purse? Because he was a real hero, Chucky. He didn't expect a million dollar reward. He didn't expect to be lionized by the press. He saved 54 people because something inside him made him go into that plane when his good sense told him otherwise. He was willing to settle for a few credit cards. They sold to LaPlante for what? A couple of bucks, huh? Give him enough for a decent meal. All this is off the record, Chucky, because if John Bummer lives, Mr. LaPlante is going to offer his assurances there'll be no further misbehavior on his part. And what's more, he's going to apologize. I'm, 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 I'm going to apologize to Bubber? I could deny I had those cards on the plane, LaPlante. You could lie, you mean. Well, maybe I won't lie. Maybe I'll tell the story the way I just did, and everybody will understand John Bubber is an even bigger hero than they thought he was. And you, you are the lowest fucking thing that ever crawled. Your name is going to be synonymous with cynical opportunism and blackmail. You're not going to get a cent. I got a kid. I'm a person for Christ's sake. Well, then, sake. for your child's sake, rise above it. Try to show some decency, for God's sake. You may have killed him already. <laughs> Channel 4's Gail Gailey being escorted into the hotel by police officers. Gail, who was rescued from the plane crash by John Bubber, has a special relationship with the Angel of Light 104. Now, as to what she might be doing here at the hotel, that of... He will only talk to you, Miss Gailey, and he won't move any closer, so if you'll just lean out, we'll hold you from behind. Fellas, give us, give us a moment. Let her in there. Let her in there. Let her in there. John. 
John, I'm here. Don't do it. Everything's okay. Okay. I want you to know I never meant to hurt you. This is for you. It'll explain everything. John, I know the whole story. You do? John! John, it's okay. It's nothing. It was a, a moment of weakness. A little mistake. People will understand. A little mistake? You're being too hard on yourself. I, I have him here, the, the little creep, the guy who's trying to blackmail you. I brought him here. Oh, oh, hold on. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Get out of here. I gotta talk to you, buddy. Oh, La Plante. Come on, John. Don't be an asshole. I don't like heights. Please, La Plante, I'm sorry. It's all in my letter there to, get to Miss Kelly. I was all wrong. Turn that thing off. You want him to jump? Go on, get out of here. Both of you. John, I just want to talk to you for a minute, and then you can jump. You can jump twice for all I can. Talk from there. You can talk from there. In private, they got cameras and all that crap in there. Shh. Microphones. There is someone out on the ledge with bubbers. We know we were doing this is a rescue specialist of some kind from the police or fire department. He, he is moving. He is moving toward bugger, crawling. He does not appear to have a safety rope tied to him. And as we've explained, the fire department has. I'm sorry, I had the shoe. You told me you didn't want any publicity because of your legal problem. I don't recall saying I didn't want a million bucks. I didn't expect them to go for it, and then uh, you didn't come forward, and they investigated my war record, and I kept expecting you to come out and expose me. Where you been? I was in jail, for Christ's sake. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. We, we could fall off of here. You should go inside. You're risking your life again. I'm beginning to be aware of that, John. Listen, I'm not going to do nothing heroic here. You can trust me on that, buddy. Now, why don't we sit down for a while? You know, you could, like, rest up for the jump. Huh? John, you think you've got problems for Christ's sake? Oh. I'm the guy with the problems. We still don't know why John Bubber, hero to the nation, stepped out onto the ledge 15 stories above the street more than an hour ago. But we now have the identity of the man who has been talking to him for the last 15 minutes at great personal risk. He has been identified as Bernard LaPlante, former employee of Gubbers. Mom! Mom! It's my father! Just tuned in. Bernie? John Bubber has stepped out on a ledge. He's a one of your clients. Stories above the LaPlante, you crazy bastard. The bastard. By LaPlante? Bernard LaPlante. Uh, I'm gonna grab some high ground, get a hot overhead angle. At Dudley's Carpet and Hair Company, the plant seems to have persuaded John Bummer to sit down, and the two men seem to be engrossed in conversation. What they might be saying in a moment. What's he doing up there, Mom? Where's your coat? Get your coat. As long as he has, and is fire a official, good sign since he has not jumped. He says that if a man doesn't jump immediately, there is a chance that he won't him. jump at all. A man who claims well, he is an expert lip reader reports that John Bubber and Bernard LaPlante are discussing religion as they sit on the ledge. You stole her purse. Why you were saving her? What's the big deal? You decided to pretend you were me. A little moment of weakness, right? So I sort of swiped the purse. I got feet of clay too, buddy. And now she thinks 
You're blackmailing me. She don't like me, John. And she ain't alone. I guess it's kind of a personality thing. Look at those maniacs down there. They love you, for Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. I can't face those people now. The looks in their eyes after the trust they gave me. Great, you make this big goddamn mess and then you jump. Beautiful. Listen, John, I was at the hospital today. I seen you with those little bastards, pardon my vulgarity. It was you, I thought I heard you. I'm not saying I hate sick people or anything, but I, I hate being around them, if you know what I mean. There you go, you, you, you inspire this kid to, to live. I probably would have vomited on him. Alan? Alan's okay? See what I mean? You remember his name, for Christ. Yeah, but you're the guy who got, got those people out of the plane in the plant, not me. You would have gone in there. You wouldn't have thought twice. That's the kind of guy you are. Trust me on that. So what do we do now? Well, the blackmail thing don't sound like such a bad idea. What do you mean? Well, you still got some of the money left, don't you? You didn't spend all the dough on that do-gooder shit, did you? There's a lot of it left. What are you getting at? You see, the TV lady, she thinks I'm blackmailing you because you swiped her purse while you were saving her, and she thinks I know you swiped it because you sold it to me before you heard about the million bucks. But what she don't know is that I really am gonna blackmail you. Because I swiped her purse because it was me on the plane. You see what I mean? You want me not to jump mm. and keep on lying mm. and pay you to keep your mouth shut? Mm. You are crazy. Mm -mm. Why? Because I don't need your problems, John, all this TV bullshit. All these fans, I just want some of the money, not even all of it. Here's what I got in mind. What do you mean, what do I want to know? I want to know everything. Who's this screwball of plant, for Pete's sake? What the hell are those two bozos chattering about? What? You can't hear them? Read their lips. You're a reporter. Improvise. This is not a news story. This is real life. Real life? Jesus Christ, Gail, what's... Don't crack up on me now. Oh, why would I? Why would I? I'm a professional, aren't I? I'm a cynical, hard-bitten, professional, oh, hard-ass, aren't I? A, a, a cold, ambitious uh, bitch or something. I, that's not what everybody says. <laughs> no, Gail, you are none of those things. You are a goddamn cream puff. You're a marshmallow. That's why everybody loves you. Now try and be a professional marshmallow and get out there and report the goddamn human drama. <laughs> You can't quit, it's unprofessional. I don't know why he's up there. Maybe he misses you. He wanted to see you the other night. I wouldn't let him. Oh, God, maybe it's my fault. And he's all alone. He's getting older. And I thought you hated him. No, I don't hate him. He just makes me angry. He's just selfish and self centered and cynical. What's cynical? It's when you say everybody else cheats, why shouldn't I? But he, he, he does have his good side. He does. He's just hidden. He just, like when you were in the hospital and you had your appendix out and he stayed by your bed the whole night long and he hates hospitals. Oh, God, it just seems like your father's at his best when there's a crisis. When, when something goes really wrong or there's some kind of emergency, your father, he, he just forgets to be Bernie the plant and acts sort of like a, a human, human being. Look! Just a minute, just a minute. Let's get Oh, God, this. what is it? Something's going on. He seems to be calling out to them, and now, now, he's holding up two fingers. He's signaling something, holding up two fingers. There are firemen leaning out the window. They have what appear to be long What's poles. What's happening? They're reaching the poles toward the two men on the ledge. There's something at the tip of the poles. It looks like... It, it looks like, I think it's... Wait a minute, I have a report here. Coffee. It's coffee. We're told that Bubber and LaPlante asked for two coffee. cups It's just of coffee. like your father to request something totally inappropriate. Thousands of people are watching and he wants a cup of coffee. is a convicted felon due to be sentenced tomorrow for trafficking in stolen goods to thrice convicted... Gail should have aired that bit first. She's the one who found this clown LaPlante. She let Channel 8 get a beat on us. D. What if Bubber has got something to hide? What if he's the wrong guy, not really the hero? Hell of a story. No, Deke. That is not a good story. 
We back this guy. He's our boy. We gave him a vote of confidence. We gave him a million dollars. You got it? Four-year scholarship to a top college plus medical school or law school or whatever Joey wants. You pay off the 2500 to my attorney, plus pay her fee in full, plus my annual consultancy. Plus giving a deposition to the judge on your behalf, Bernie. It is not gonna work. Are you kidding? The judge gets a testimonial from John Bubber. You think he's not gonna lighten up, suspend my sentence for the angel of Flight 104? That's the not what I mean, the scam. I'm not comfortable deceiving people. Comfortable? You took my shoe for Christ's sake. Why should you be comfortable? Uncomfortable is how you should be. Besides, how comfortable do you think you're gonna feel if you jump off of here, breaking our hearts of millions, and leave Bernie LaPlante vomiting on little kids instead of inspiring them? You think I'd give a cent to charity? Help out veterans, give donations to the homeless? John, I'm not a nice guy. You're the nice guy. Now do your job. Okay. Be a hero. Better get rid of your confession. Are you gonna be all right with me receiving all the credit? Hey, I don't take credit. I'm a cash kind of guy. <laughs> now, what do you say? We got a deal? You sure we can pull this off? John, you're sitting on a ledge about to jump to your doom. I'm about to go to prison. What exactly have we got to lose? They're getting to their feet. Ooh, carefully. Oh, my God. Oh, very the excitement in the crowd. John Mubber is standing and he's helping his companion narrow or less high above the street. Just a misstep here. They can their feet. After what I did, how do you know you can trust me? Because bottom line, John, I ain't no different than all those assholes out there. We all trust you for, for, for Christ's sake. That was really dumb coming out here on this ledge. You can't help him. He's gonna pull you over. No! Never reach out! I'm gonna put this line around you. Put the line on him! You can't help him. He's gonna pull you off. If he goes... I go. You got that? He's gonna pull you off! Put the line on him! Yes, sir. I got it. <laughs> Zooming in tighter yet. It captures the stark drama at great personal risk. Is I afraid? <laughs> well, at moments like that, you don't think about yourself. You think about the focus. You think about F-stop. You think about the 11 o'clock news. Everybody counting on you. Looking good, partner. Hang in there. You're a goddamn saint, John. Pardon the vulgarity. Well, it's true that I saved uh, Bernard LaPlante's life just now, but I couldn't have done it if he hadn't saved my life first. You see, uh, I had a... I had a terrible moment of weakness. And I was feeling, uh, I guess you'd call it, uh, overwhelmed by the pressures of fame and, and celebrity. I, I didn't feel uh, quite adequate. Uh, I wasn't measuring up to people's expectations of my image. And I was going to take that despair out uh, on the ledge with the intention. Uh, How'd you get in? Doing that, I, I snuck in. This is private here. No media. Was it you? On the plane. Who saved my life? Look, lady, I don't give no interviews. I got an attorney. You got any questions, you could talk to her. Mr. LaPlante. 
Bernie, I want to just for a minute talk to you like a human being, not a reporter. I'm somebody who was going to die in a burning plane. And I looked up, and this man came out of the smoke. His face was all covered with mud and soot. And he saved my life. Off the record. Was it you? Off the record, off the record. What's that? Like, uh, time out? Just means it's between us. Doesn't leave the room. Lady, do I look dumb enough to run into a burning plane and save a bunch of strangers? I ain't the type. We're standing here in the lobby of the hotel with Evelyn LaPlante, who says that she is the wife of the mysterious Bernie LaPlante, Ev. who oh, was rescued Jesus from a 15 story Christ ledge almighty. 20 minutes ago by John Bubber. Mrs. LaPlante has just told me that Bernard LaPlante spoke to her earlier today about going away on a long trip and wanting to say goodbye to his 10 year old son, Joey. Joey. I, I, I didn't know Bernie would try to jump off a building. I, I didn't jump. understand. I, I I just thought he was up to his old... There you go, TV. You know, See, I, 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 you no. can't believe one word you hear on TV. Bernard LaPlante is a, is a decent, wonderful human being deep down. It's all bullshit, I swear to God. You just have to know him. I guess you love your father, too, huh, Joey? You leave my boy alone. My, dad, my dad's great. He took me to the zoo. How did you feel, Joey, seeing your dad up there on that ledge? I was scared, but, but, but I, but. But what, son? But I knew John Bubber would save him. Well, it's true that I saved him, but not with fast life just now. I couldn't have done it if he had saved my life. I think you should at least tell your son about his father. Off the record, thank you for saving my life. You're welcome. An organization designed to help the needy, the homeless, uh, veterans, elderly. We're even funding a group for the protection of small animals. Mr. Bubber. Mr. Bubber. Hello, Miss Gailey. Do you have a question for me? Everybody thinks of you as a hero, Mr. Bubber. How do you see yourself? I think we're all heroes if you catch us at the right moment. We all have something noble and decent in us trying to get out. And we're all less than heroic at other times. It's the media that uh, notices one person one moment and not another. I'm just like the next person, full of frailty, with uh, some courage, some decency mixed in. You think I'm a hero. To me, a hero is just a symbol of what's good in all of us. You're looking at me, and maybe you just notice what's What's good in yourself? What a crock of shit. Have you ever heard more bullshit or drivel coming from somebody who's not even the president? I don't know. Uh, it's not unthinkable. What? The presidency. The public loves him. You remember where I said how I was going to explain about life, buddy? Well, the thing about life is it gets weird. People are always talking to you about truth. Everybody always knows what the truth is, like it was toilet paper or something, and they got a supply in a closet. But what you learn as you get older is there ain't no truth. All there is is bullshit. Pardon my vulgarity here. Layers of it. One layer of bullshit on top of another. And what you do in life, like when you get older, is you pick the layer of bullshit you prefer, and that's your bullshit, so to speak. You got that? No. Well, it's complicated. Maybe when you go to college. You're gonna go to college, right? You gotta go to college. I got it all fixed up. Your mom and I want you to go. 
Now listen, Joey. Well, I'm gonna tell you now it's off the record, okay? You know what that means. It means that don't leave this room. Or whatever this is. Do. Strict confidence, right? Remember that night? It was raining like a son of a bitch, and I didn't show up on time to take it to the movies. The night of the plane crash where you seen on TV where John Bubba saved all this people. Well, the thing about TV is you don't want to believe what you see. Not always. Not if you're smart. Now, what really happened? But you always say keep a low profile. Right. And you said never stick your neck out. Right. Well, how could you go on a burning plane and save 54 people? Well, I screwed up. Ah! My daughter fell in the lion's cage! The zookeeper, lady, call the zookeeper. Hey! Somebody call the zookeeper, for Christ's sake. Please, please, my little girl, she fell in the lion's cage. Help me, please! Oh, for Christ's sake. Here. Watch my shoes. <laughs> <laughs>